If you guys are in technical sales or aspiring to be in technical sales, then on this episode, we're going to break down the top five steps that you need to do to become dominant in your industry. Gladiator in this auto war. What you think that I've been fighting for? Got a cape on like a superhero. They rushing at me like a matador. Nah, nah, I don't need your energy. I don't need the negativity. I'm just trying to bring my people up. Promise y'all I got the remedy. Straight to the roof. Tell them we bringing the troops. We got a little surprise. You thinking that we need the truth. We give it 120. We never make an excuse. So go run and tell everybody down that we coming for you. So the first point is going to be assessing your current vehicle, assessing your current company. So if, you, if you're looking to really make a commitment, whether you're getting into technical sales or you're already in technical sales in some fashion, you have to first look at the employer that is employing you because you can be the best in your industry and you can just dominate. But if you're handcuffed or bottlenecked by your employer, then that's something that, that you can't really achieve your greatness if you're limited in what you can do. And so some of those limiting things can be you don't get commission, right? If you don't get commission and you've got certain financial goals and income goals for yourself and you don't get any commission and you're capped at $90,000, $120,000 a year of your base salary, regardless of all the other perks of cars and company credit cards and stuff like that, um, if you don't have commission, you're not going to be able to reach that goal. So, so the first thing you need to do is really assess, are you in the right vehicle? Are you with the right company that is going to allow you to fully flourish and develop uh, yourself as a dominator in your industry? And some people are scared to change and some people don't want to take a risk. But I'll tell you from personal experience, taking risks multiple times, leaving companies that that did have handcuffs on me to where I couldn't grow anymore, um, and then eventually leaving uh, the technical sales industry altogether to start my own business, um, I reached my potential, I reached my cap. And then from there, I said, well, if I want to take it a step further, I have to start my own business. But look at your current company and be like, do I have the support that I need? So regardless of commission, income, and all the upsides of it, of what you can get, do I have the support that I need? Right? We've talked about this on different episodes before. Um, and you can go to YouTube, uh, on my YouTube channel, and look at all those different episodes. But if you don't have the support team, then you're brought in to hunt, and you're brought in to bring in new business, and then you bring in the new business, and then your boss or upper management is like, all right, we don't have account managers to take care of this. So we need you to uh, manage these accounts for right now. That is the last thing a hunter in sales wants to hear because they are brought to bring in the business, but not to farm it after that. Um, so if you don't have the support team, if you don't have project engineers, account managers, customer service reps, a quoting team, things like that, um, then you should consider like, maybe this isn't the right fit for me. Now, if you're new in the industry and this is your first year and you've just got a job, then you need to prove your worth before you can jump ship because nobody wants somebody that gets into a company and then leaves after a year, but doesn't really have any performance merits to, to sit on, to be able to say, yep, I grew them 20%. I brought in 6 million in new business. I did this, this, and that. Um, but I, I left after a year or two or three because, uh, there just wasn't the growth potential. If you don't have that to fall back on, then you need to stick with your company that you're with and you need to perform at the highest level that you can. Um, but if you don't have that team, man, that, that could be a significant downside. I've worked at companies where we didn't have the team in place, but the owners made a commitment that once I was brought in and we brought in new business, we would build out the team and we did do that. And we had a whole team underneath us of project engineers, sales, uh, sales account managers, customer service people, a quoting team that would do all of the RFQs and quoting process for the sales team. And we built up the team and it was great. But you really need to sit and think like, is this really the right vehicle for me that's going to reach my potential? And if it's not, and you're watching on LinkedIn, LinkedIn is a, is a place you need to be to be able to you know, figure out that exit strategy and where you want to make your next move. Number two we're going to go into is you need to have a commitment to learning. And by learning, I don't mean just learning the technical side. Uh, for those of you that follow my other content, I tell you that sales is 80% people and 20% technical, the person who knows the most about the sales, you know, this, the product or service that you're selling is not the best salesperson because they get too stuck into the weeds of only focusing on that technical stuff. And then they do what I've said in, in other videos and, and courses before is they show up and throw up and they just spill out all this information about the technical side, but they're missing all the social cues, all the sales cues on how you should follow, push the sale through. What are they really looking for? How can you how can you provide a solution rather than just sell your service or your product? 
Um, but you have to commit to learning. Now, if you're if you're into formalized learning from a sales standpoint, we have Technical Sales University, uh, which I started two years ago, which has eight hours of video content training you through everything from the initial steps in sales and the fundamentals through advanced uh, techniques and training and stuff like that. So you can go to technicalsalesu.com um, to check that out and you can subscribe and sign up for it. Uh, it's not free, but if you want that structured way of doing it, that's a good source for you. If you want the free path, go to my YouTube channel. We've got over 150 videos on there, um, a lot of them about sales. And you can just w go through the videos, take notes. Um, if you've got other people out there that from a sales standpoint that you've been following, follow their content, train on it, take notes. But then the next step is you actually have to practice it. So you can watch these videos, you can join these lives, you can ask great questions and you can do all that. But are you going to actually practice it? So like it may sound stupid, but standing in front of a mirror and practicing your pitch to yourself in a mirror every single day until you still until you feel like you have it down cold is a great way to do it. Practicing your pitch to yourself, to one of your family members, your spouse, a friend or something like that. Just the initial pitch when you first talk to somebody, the initial points of your product or service, even if you do it you know, with yourself in a room, saying it out loud and becoming very repetitive and flowing with it to where you're not fumbling and stumbling on words. You can just say, hey, I'm my name is Kyle Milan. I own this company or I work for this company. Here's what we do. Can I have 10 minutes of your time to talk about how we can possibly solve some problems or whatever your pitch is? But you have to practice it. It's not something where you can just <clears throat> think about it and say, all right, I'm going to um, I'm going to do all this stuff. And then once you get on the phone with somebody, once you meet somebody in person, once you get that presentation, that video call, whatever it is that you're trying to go after, then you're just like, oh, shoot, I got to figure this out. So you have to commit to training yourself, understanding that this stuff changes all the time. Guys that have been and girls that have been in this industry for 20 years, it's way different than it was. Even the last five years, it's way different. The art of selling behind it is different and it's changed. <clears throat> more focusing on brand awareness, more focusing on marketing, more focusing on content, more focusing on providing value first instead of going after the direct sale. These are things that are happening now and that work now. And if you're still stuck in the five to seven to 15 years ago, way of doing it, then you're just going to fail. So you have to adapt and adjust and train yourself on what is working now. So I would say the best place to find that stuff is on our YouTube channel and on Technical Sales University. Um, but anybody that you know, anybody that you follow, if you can take one piece of information from a 20 minute presentation about social selling, about the influence of, of sales, psychology behind sales, anything like that, um, you need to, to watch it, read it, read books, all that stuff, consume the content, but then put it in action by actually training and practicing it and then doing it every single day, every single week. The third point is going to be prospecting. You have to prospect and build a prospecting database and foundation, a very strong one every single day, every single week. So how can you go about doing that? About a week ago, we did a LinkedIn sales navigator training course. Uh, it was about an hour worth of content to where I walked you through with my screen, showed you exactly how you can build a prospect list using LinkedIn Sales Navigator. And it's only $79 a month. Um, it's well worth it. And so with that, you can build a prospect list extremely quick without knowing who to go after. LinkedIn's a great way to build a prospecting database. You can go through all of your trade show contacts that you've had over the last couple of years. You can go through your email marketing stuff if you've got list built at your company. Uh, you can go through your, your current customers, competitors. You can go through your competitors, current customers. But the point is that you have to build a list. Now, ideally, you're going to build this prospecting list on some sort of CRM system. It doesn't have to be HubSpot. It could be any sort of system, even if it's something simple like a spreadsheet. You have to start somewhere and build this list because you want to be able to track and edit this data as you start working through these people to see are they a fit for you or are they not as you go through that qualification process. But you have to be prospecting every single week. The way that sales marketing is, you don't know what's left in your tank, right? And it's 100% true. If your sales are up here right now and you're like, oh my God, I don't know, I don't have enough capacity to push all this new revenue through, that does not mean that you stop and then wait and say, all right, we're going to shut off the funnel and we're going to just work on what we've got and then once we get to the point where we're caught up, then we're going to turn back on the sales funnel. It doesn't work like that. And any veterans out there know that it doesn't work like that. You have to do this every single day. So prospecting, even if you're super busy, even if you've got 15 projects on your plate, um, you still every week need to be going out there and looking for new people to bring in your pipeline because you never know. You could have somebody, you could have 
10 opportunities and six of them could be hot to try. And you know, like I'm going to close these guys. I know that they're going to go with us. And then a week later, four or five of those are gone and you don't have anything to where you're like, man, I should have kept on prospecting. I don't have anybody new in the pipeline. You cannot count those chickens before they're hatched. So you have to every single week. And I would say every single day, you have to focus on prospecting, building out that list, reaching out to people, engaging with them, sending them messages, sending them phone, you know, giving them phone calls, going to personal visits, sending them snail mail, whatever you have to do every single day, because that is the key. Because I can guarantee you that most people in your industry and most of your counterparts and all your competitors are not doing that. They work, 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 and they get this blitz and this rush of new opportunities. Then they stop and they pause and they work on those opportunities. Then those opportunities either happen or they don't. And then they say, okay, I'm going back at it. And I work, 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 and then build it up. And then they take those new opportunities and it's the same thing over and over again. But if you're constantly just chipping away and just doing it every single week, every single day, you're going to be far, far more advanced than them and, and heading down the path way quicker and have tons more opportunities if you look at net net over the year than you will if you just start and stop and start and stop. Right. So you have to make a commitment to prospecting on a daily, minimum level, weekly basis. The next tip is going to be committing to LinkedIn. And what do I mean by committing to LinkedIn? For, again, for those of you who know me, I'm very bullish on LinkedIn. LinkedIn is where I feel like you guys should be paying, paying most of your attention to because it's the fastest way to get in direct contact with your potential customers. It's where you can build a list, it's where you can email mar or market to them through cold messages, networking them, send them valuable stuff, send them your content. You don't have to wait for marketing campaigns to start, but everything can be done on LinkedIn. It could all be done within the platform, but you have to make a commitment to do it every single day. And so every single day, I mean, you need to spend, be spending 30 minutes a day prospecting for new people and you need to be spending 30 minutes a day engaging with your existing network. And you need to do that every single day because LinkedIn is the only place where you can say, which companies do I want to go after? Here's some filtered search results. Here's the companies. And then here's the people that work at those companies. Now, can you do that on, on places like Zoom Info uh, where you can get their contact information? Yes. But within LinkedIn, you can build a list, click on somebody's name and say, I want to message that person right now. I want to send them this case study we just did last week about their robotics industry that I think that I could help them out right now. And you can do it in an instant and you don't have to wait to build out a campaign. But you have to also engage with people. You can't just go on the offense and say, I'm just going to um, send people stuff and I'm going to ask them for their time and I'm going to send them valuable stuff without then, in the same sense, going through your newsfeed, looking at what your new network is posting, engaging with those posts, whether it's just liking it or leaving a comment, letting them know that you're seeing their stuff, You know, cheer them along because it's not a one-way street. You have, If you want them to pay attention to you, you have to pay attention to them first. Okay, So you have to go out and actually do that work. Whatever people send me connection, connection requests, even if it's like, yeah, they, I can definitely help them out. They, we can send them some valuable content. I look at their activity in the last 90 days. And if their activity in the last 90 days is non-existent, then I know that all they're doing with building out their network is to either sell to them or grab their contact information and then sell to them later. So I always look at, are they even on LinkedIn? Because I don't want to connect with somebody if they're not even on it. And if they're on it, are they even posting? Some people are like, I don't, I don't post every day. I don't post, you know, very frequently at all. But are they even liking and engaging on stuff? And if they are, then yes, I will connect with them. But if they're not, then it's just a waste of time. It's just a vanity metric of boosting up your follower numbers and your connection numbers. So it's it's if I can't provide some sort of value that they're gonna actually pay attention to, then I don't want to connect with them. So that goes to show you that a lot of people are like that too. They will connect with you if they see that you're actually engaging on content on a regular basis. And so you have to commit to using LinkedIn every single day. Like I said, we did that video last week about building a prospecting list out. We've got tons of videos on my YouTube channel showing you exactly what you should do on LinkedIn, probably over an hour and a half worth of content showing you exactly what you should do every single day, every single week to build out your prospect list and to use LinkedIn to do that. So make that commitment to LinkedIn. Last but certainly not least is going to be planning your week. This is where your week can quickly get away from you um, with, especially in your industry of technical sales, right? Like, so a new opportunity comes up and you send it off to, for somebody to quote, and then all of a sudden they come back to you with a hundred questions, or, or if you're in industrial manufacturing, the operations team, the engineers want to, want to answer some questions or ask some questions about the project or the opportunity or stuff comes up with your existing accounts 
or internal meetings or things like that, your week has to be planned with from a prioritization standpoint of these are the things that I want to get done each day. You know, create your power list of three to five things. And it needs to be focused and balanced on I'm going to take care of new opportunities, but I'm going to hunt for new opportunities too. So like the existing stuff, existing accounts, things like that. You definitely want to work on that every day, but you have to be hunting for new opportunities every day too. And if you don't plan out your week and if you're like, my week's pretty much open, then people will take away your time and they're going to do it in not the most efficient or effective way. They're going to start to plan what is your week and what is it going to look like if you don't if you don't plan it out and say, I'm booked from one o'clock until three o'clock, I am um, I'm doing my prospecting, I'm doing my cold calls, I'm sending outreach messages, messages on LinkedIn. You really need to plan out your week, every, you know, a week ahead of time. So on this Friday coming up, you want to plan next week. What are the top things you want to get done? Book calendar time on your calendar for yourself to focus on those things. Find little 30, 60 minute slots, even if it's a 15 minute slot. Fill it out and say, at this time, I'm going to do this task or I'm going to do this thing. Um, even if it's like, I'm going to engage with people on LinkedIn for 30 minutes, set a time on your calendar to book that out. So when your phone or your computer says, hey, in 10 minutes, you got to do this this event um, and that event is engaging on LinkedIn, then it's already booked and you can just jump right into it and do it. But you have to plan out your week accordingly. Otherwise, it's just going to slip away and other people will say, oh yeah, you're free. You're not that busy. You don't have these things going on. Um, I need you to do this for me. I need you to do that for me. That's you want to take that control away from them and say, "Here's my week. It's planned out. Here's my day. You know, the, I have this slot and this slot that are available for internal meetings, internal issues, things like that, and really control it from that standpoint. And so for that, we will close this out. And I appreciate all the comments, and I appreciate you guys liking and subscribing and sharing this content with anybody that you know, and we will see you on the next one.